Hey you all, Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are in St. Augustine, Florida. And even more specifically than that, we're in front of Ripley's Believe It or Not. But this is not, this is not just any Ripley's Believe It or Not. And I believe every Ripley's Believe It or Not is special in its own way. But this one, this one is very special. This is the very first Ripley's Auditorium, the very first Ripley's Believe It or Not. It was not built, or not, not, not implemented, not founded until uh, Robert Ripley actually passed away. This was, a, it used to be a hotel here in St. Augustine. This was the, the hotel where all the big wigs, the famous people stayed at when they visited St. Augustine. Robert Ripley himself would stay here when he would visit the area. And it was called either the Warden Hotel or the Warden Castle. And Robert Ripley apparently was was obsessed with it. He wanted to own it, and he actually attempted to buy it several times. Um, they turned him down. They would not. They would not sell him the castle. However, he died in 1949. And I don't know if they just felt bad for saying no so much, but his family, his estate, was actually able to purchase the uh, the Warden Castle here, and uh, they turned it in homage to Robert Ripley, the life he spent traveling the world, collecting strange items, writing about strange items and strange experiences. They, they made this the very first Ripley's Auditorium, the very first permanent Ripley's exhibit, and it is still open today. So in some ways, almost the flagship Ripley's, it is the first. I think technically the Orlando one's the flagship because uh, the Ripley's Corporation is actually based out of Orlando, but this is just two hours north and an absolute, uh, absolute amazing replica. You know, a lot of the Ripley's, they have like really unusual buildings, like like the one in uh, Gatlinburg is, is made like the woods, got the giant trees. Um, the one in uh, Orlando is in a sinkhole. The one in Branson looks like it's coming apart from like it's falling apart from the, the giant ball of twine smashing through the top. Uh, the one in, in uh, Panama City is a boat. It's a lot of interesting motifs. But this is this one, while not as flashy, not as interesting, just has a, an amazing amount of history. This is a, a hotel, a castle, that Robert Ripley himself, as, long as, as well as other dignitaries and fam famed people that came here through the St. Augustine area, stayed here at this castle. You can see they have the uh, sightseeing tour bus here out front. But yeah, I love this Ripley's, and of course, whenever I'm in an area, whenever I stop in an area, I like to check in and see what's new at the local Ripley's. So please, follow me. And I do apologize if I talk a little fast or move a little quickly through the Ripley's, they close in a little less than an hour. This Ripley's actually get closes a little earlier than most Ripley's. A lot of Ripley's will stay open late into the evening. This one closes at 5 p.m. on the dot. So. Uh, I want to show the whole thing, but I will, uh, I will maybe make it a little more brisk than usual trip through uh, through the auditorium here. So we enter the lobby here, greeted by this silverware mermaid. You can see her skin is actually all butter knives. Looks like she's primarily made of butter knives. I actually don't see any other silverware except butter knives, so more like a uh, butter knife mermaid. Car park sculpture of Jack Sparrow. Looks very heavily armed there. But uh, we have the Gurning Man inviting us in to the museum. And under this candy portrait of Elvis, we have this pretty amazing wood sculpture here. That's the crocodile or alligator down there. Got an elephant spraying some wooden water through the air. Yeah, this is incredibly. Incredibly intricate here. This is the original Castle Warren marble fireplace here. But instead of a fire, they have a clamshell bathtub so they would ba bathe babies in the giant clamshells. And up on the mantle, we have a four horned sheep, the four horned Jacob sheep, and then a, uh, a lamb here. The, because this is just a malformed lamb, but it looks kind of like a half lamb, half rabbit. It's pretty interesting. 
All right, from here we head up the stairs of the old hotel. This is the clothespin clock made entirely out of clothespins. It was interesting to see things made out of interesting things. And then here's a photo of a world record attempt that took place here. It says uh, the uh, largest wedding vow renewal. So they had, I guess, a, a wedding vow renewal up here. All these couples up here, all onlookers watch from the parking lot. Wow, sounds really noisy up here. It is interesting how much of the hotel is maintained here at the uh, auditorium. If you walk walk around these winding halls, I guess these would be like rooms that guests would stay in. But uh, they're decorated in a unique Ripley's way. Oh, are we shrinking? Is this okay? The tiny door there. I guess there's no entrance. We gotta go. Gotta go in this way. And here, in this box, we have a genuine Fiji mermaid. It's one of my favorite artifacts. I'm just fascinated with the Fiji mermaids. You look closely. You see, it's got little bits of hair, a little beard, a little bit of head hair there, even a little fuzz there on the fish tail. Now these were um, made as gaffs or you know a fake piece of taxidermy out of uh, they say they were made out of a monkey and a fish they claimed that it was an actual mermaid and people would people would pay to see this and uh, ripley was fascinated with these and he has collected quite a few this room is actually really loud because above the fireplace we have the uh Chainsaw, this is, this is the Chainsaw Alphabet Pencil. So the alphabet was carved into that pencil there by a chainsaw. And as a bonus, you look down into the fireplace and instead of logs, they're pencil, like pencil logs. There's a piece of coal from the Titanic. And then uh, you see these and some of the Ripley's these are bats that are painted on. That one looks like it has, um, I was gonna say Morticia Adams, but according to that, it's Angelina Jolie. So Angelina Jolie painted on a bat, and uh, that is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs on a bat. Over here towards the restrooms, we've got a Robert Ripley penny press. Hello, friend. Oh, hello. Believe it or not, you won't find pennies like these everywhere. Well, you will not find you, you will not find pennies like this anywhere. Let's see, we have the uh, shrunken head, the gurning man, the uh, two-headed calf. I was hoping that I had one that had the building on it, but this one, uh, this one says St. Augustine. So I want to get the one that says, I guess they all say St. Augustine on it. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have any of these others from the other Ripley's. Let's, uh, I don't think I have the gurning man. Let's make a gurning man. All right, we put this. I still hear the chainsaw from in the other room. All right. I've traveled over 201 countries, and the strangest thing I've seen is man. This includes you, my friend. I'm strange, and <laughs> now he does a chuckle at me. All right, we were gonna make the gurney man. See the penny right there. Hello, friend. This is a pressing matter. These pennies are unbelievable. There we go, nice hot penny. Nice and shiny, came out good. Got our gurning man there, and we will try to make it home. This giant magnifying glass here. I guess I'm supposed to look through that. A magnifying? A giant head or something? These are cockroaches painted to be famous musicians. Not sure what this one in the front is. I think that's Jimi Hendrix as a cockroach right there. I don't recognize anyone. <laughs> Leave a comment in the comment section. Do you recognize who this cockroach is? All right, this is the, the throne. The throne of love here.
dollar in the front glove. Oh, what's it saying? What's it saying about me? Am I a wild thing? Am I exciting? I'm enchanted. Do you see that? It says I'm enchanted. Isn't that the same thing as being haunted? Something about the There it is. Every Ripley is required by mandate. We must have a shrunken head. We have our shrunken head right there. A real human head. Skinned, made tiny. Some other heads here. These are ancestor heads, decorated skulls from New Guinea. Slowly rotating towards us. The head was where the soul locked. I do find it interesting they still have all the doors everywhere, like different hotel rooms. I don't know, I guess it's just storage. I don't know what's in there. But uh, what's in here? Oh, the Iron Maiden is in here. The legendary torture device. The Iron Maiden of Nuremberg. Is it? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. I was wondering if it was going to do that. Just demonstration. Oh! What's that? There's a ghost. There's a ghost in the Iron Maiden. I was not expecting that. Your wall of torture here. All sorts of unfun things can be done to the human body. It's a torture mask. It's just a mask that is just no fun to wear. You know, so the holes are small, you can't see it, it's heavy, it's embarrassing. There's thumb screws for torturing your thumbs. It's a scold's bridle. It's a mask that you put on a gossiping person. And uh, you see in the mouth there, there's actually an inner part that sticks in your mouth to keep you from gossiping or talking or existing in any sort of comfortable manner. It's a English man trap, in case you need to catch a man, that's your go-to right there. This is a Persian flail, that's just for hitting people. So is this an original sign from the Ripley's in Ocean City, Maryland? I've been to that Ripley's as well. It says, gaze at the mummified monk. Just one of the many scenes recreated from Ripley's world famous cartoons. Where is, is, is the mummified, I don't remember if the mummified monk is still in Ocean City. Does anyone know where that mummified, what Ripley's the mummified monk is at? I'm thinking, and I don't, it's not popping out in my brain immediately. There's Ripley's eat it or not, instead of believe it or not, it's eat it or not. Yes, you order here, you see the gentleman there eating, eating a spider taco. Delicious spider taco there. And then over here there is, that is a fork, cannibal fork used for eating fingers. I've heard of finger food, but you know, that seems a bit much. Uh, there's a bowl made of a human skull. You can feast out of the skull of your enemies. And then that back there is a bone sharpened into a dagger. A human bone to be more precise. As we come out here, you can see more of the hotel. We're kind of in the open area in the middle of the hotel. We've got uh, some structures down here. It's, it's like a lunar rover here. It's built out of erector sets. See, that's built out of erector set. And then a uh, Boba Fett on wheels there. He's got his helmets made of like typewriter buttons, I think. And you can see the different hotel rooms here. Like that would be a hotel room. That would be a hotel room. And then here we have a, this is a movie prop. This is the space buggy that was used in the film Armageddon, which I've actually never seen. This is the Bubble Boy vehicle. I, think, I remember vaguely from the 80s, Bubble Boy was a boy with no immunities. They actually had to live in a bubble. And this device, I guess, could transport him. I think the bubble would expand over top of this and he could wheel around in the safety of his bubble. I haven't started uh, collecting these medallions yet. Me and Adam noticed these medallions the other day at Disney that they sell them there. And these are a little more expensive. It's four 
for $15, a lot more expensive than the press pennies. But they're pretty cool. They have the different, they have Yang, the uh, Unicorn Man there. There's Robert Ripley's on that one. I don't know if I'm ready to take the plunge yet and start collecting medallions. That may be a dangerous road to go down. Matchstick sculptures are kind of a, a uh, mainstay with the Ripley's museums. Here is a Matchstick Space Station here. I'm pretty fascinated with the building here. Now they've turned this motel into a Ripley's. So you still have the original fireplace here as well. And I think this is always one of my favorite parts of the Ripley's where they have the, uh, the freak animals. The uh, animals that are born very unique. This is Beauregard, the six-legged steer. He was owned by Paul Springer of Wisconsin. Lived for 14 years, and he had two legs growing out of his back. So that's pretty miraculous there. And I guess this is a a uh, a woman here that is. Uh, Sitting on eggs. It says Biddy Cassells did not have a, a brooding hen, so she would sit on the eggs herself, much like a hen would do. Some other adorable, uh, adorable alternate versions of animals made by God. Uh, the two-headed lamb there. Two-headed rabbit is uh, is really really adorable, and. Uh, of course, the legend of Mike the Headless Chicken. That's not the actual Mike the Headless Chicken there, but a uh, chicken that lived for 18 months without a head. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. I could, I don't think I could live nearly that long without a head. It's a rooster that would smoke cigarettes. Um, I don't know what's wrong with someone where they would teach a rooster to smoke. I don't. It just seems demented to me. Uh, it says, "Do not look in this hole." Um. I think I'm going to look anyways, because it says there's a four-legged duckling in there. Let's see. Where is he? Well, there he is in the back. Let's zoom in and take a peek at the little four-legged ducky. In here, we have the articles found in a cow's stomach. I guess cows are bad to just gobble up hay, not pay attention to the nails and hooks and things that are laying in, uh, in the hay. Um, that's a cow magnet hanging right there. It says uh, these keep metal objects from passing through the digestive system. So what do you do with a cow magnet? Do you like, oh, okay, you feed it to the cow. So you get the cow to swallow a magnet so it holds everything else in place. How do you keep them from pooping out the cow magnet? And you can see this is a fence here that a tree naturally grew around and became part of the fence. And here we have the largest known feline hairball there. I, that is like bigger than a cat's head. I don't even know how a cat would have that in, uh, in their body. And no matter how many Ripley's I go to, no matter which different Ripley's I check out, I can always count on the fact that there'll be all eight foot 11 of Wadlow here looking down on me is uh, Walter Hudson. He was the uh, 1,400 pound man. And then we see one of his, one of his uh, direct opposites here. This is uh, Edward Hagner, known as the skeleton dude. He, uh, he only weighed 48 pounds, one of the thinnest men that ever lived. Just interesting, us as a human race and what variety we have uh, between us all. And the man himself, Mr. Robert Ripley, gave us a uh, smash penny earlier on, greets us to this room, and this room here is just full of the different Ripley's characters, the true life characters, the different uh, strange people featured in Ripley's. Eric Sprague, the lizard man, who was not born different, but chose through his own choice to make himself unique and different. The snake eater here can uh, pass a snake through his nose and let it come out his mouth. This is Johnny Tong, apparently of uh, Venice Beach, California. Man, I need to go. I need to go to Venice Beach more often. The Cuban Popeye here, Avelino 
Perez Matos was known for being able to pop his eyeballs out of his head. And uh, the human flag back here, Perry Biddle of Dufuniac Springs, Florida, liked to hang himself like this on a flagpole. You see, he's actually dressed like the American flag, living up uh, to his name of the human flag. Johnny Eck, the king of the freaks, the king of the sideshow performers. He, uh, he actually had legs, but they were very small, and he hid them under his jacket. He was famous for doing his one-armed handstand here, which kind of showed off his uh, uniqueness. And they have one of Johnny X screen print paintings here. In his retirement, he would actually paint these screen door paintings. And so this is actually a piece of art painted by Johnny X, snowman there on the screen. It's the blue-faced man, Ching Fu of China was had a naturally occurring condition but this made his skin completely blue. And then we got this guy, the crocodile man. He actually uh, chose to look like that. He had dentures, but uh, he was a lover of crocodiles. He worked with crocodiles. So he decided to uh, use crocodile teeth to make himself a set of dentures. And I did not Forget about you, Zoltar. I see you looking at me over there. I will always uh, pay my debt to Zoltar. Zoltar the Gypsy, at your service. Uh, today is your lucky day, my friend, for I have a fortune especially for you. Especially for me? Closely. I'm listening. Sometimes you can tell a wise person not only by what he says, but also by what he doesn't say. Remember, it is much better to say little than to say too much and regret it later. Give Probably true. Your treasure. I already I gave have you some treasure. To share with you. Let me pass back through the center room. I think we are headed upstairs. Oh, we don't wanna forget to check out the Tibetan ram skull there. The uh, cassowary bone dagger, made from a cassowary there. Very scary looking, uh, scary, scary looking bird. And this is Eret headhunter's knife, which I guess, you know, we see a lot of shrunken heads, but those heads have got to come off those bodies some way. A mummified cat here in the center of this room. That's a very large mummified cat. Of course, the Egyptians often buried with cats as they saw them to be holy creatures. See another fireplace over there from the original hotel. Oh, what's this? It has body skull necklace? I guess that's quite a necklace to have a whole skull dangling, uh, dangling around your neck. This is right up my alley, the weird taxidermy exhibit. Have the fishing squirrel. See the squirrel there. I don't know if he's fishing for acorns or he's fishing for that apple. Actually, if you look under the leaves, there's actually an animal trap there. I don't know if he is, a, he is aware of that. Maybe he's trying to fish that apple off the animal trap without uh, getting trapped himself. Yeah, he has a sign there, no trapping. There's a two-headed parrot there. Wow. Here's a conjoined Siamese kitten. So it's a stillborn two kittens that are actually connected. But they've given them a little yarn, a little milk to enjoy in their uh, taxidermied state. Oh my goodness, look at that eight-legged puppy there. Siamese puppy. And he has a little fire hydrant in there with him. So this lion here, this vicious lion was actually brought back from Africa by Ripley. It said that it's possible that Ripley shot it himself on a hunting expedition, or maybe someone else shot him and then gave the, the past uh, lion to Ripley. But yeah, this is actually one of Ripley's personal items. That's pretty, pretty interesting. Pretty, pretty amazing. That was actually, you know, is something that Robert Ripley himself handled. He's got a portrait of a lion here. And you look closely, it's all these different little plastic toys in there. Different animals comprising the mane. You even got SpongeBob there. 
in that mane. And I really like this. It is a tortoise impaled with a hippo tusk. So a hippo tried to chomp our tortoise here and it missed everything important. It went through the shell, through the shoulder. Somehow the tortoise was just fine. Huh, I guess he walked, walked around with a hippo tooth embedded in his body the rest of his life, showing all the other turtles how tough he was. This is a snow owl, but it was actually not a living snow owl. Apparently this was recreated using chicken parts. So you take the materials from one animal and use it to create another. Here's the lip disc woman. Let's place the, uh, the custom of placing the, the, the discs within the lips. It's very interesting. It's just interesting what people do culturally. You know, obviously that would impede your day-to-day -day life to some degree, but uh, you know, it's important enough culturally to them to uh, keep with the keep with the custom. Oh, I spotted him. I spotted the the camera guy taking a picture of his girlfriend here. Let me just slide by here. Don't mean to. Oh, sorry, got in the way. Didn't mean to interrupt. I and mean, of course, it's just a camera. You can take another picture here. Just just hold that pose. You look very nice. Take a photo of this uh, this beautiful young lady here. Actually on the second floor here, kind of looking down into that main open area. And up here, this is the ba bad to the bone motorcycle. A motorcycle made out of different bones from different animals. You can see the whole cow skull there on the body, an alligator skull there on the front. I don't think it's functional, but pretty cool. Walk, walk past these doors here. Oh, some cosmonaut space food there on the wall. Sure, that was delicious. Walk around the balcony here. Oh, there's the International Space Station made out of matchsticks. That's very impressive. It's one of the biggest matchstick sculptures I've ever seen. The space shuttle there made out of uh, computer keys. And how tall Ripley's versus Star Wars characters? This Chewbacca is five six or seven six. Robert Wadlow eight foot eleven because no one is taller than Wadlow. There is some Star Wars art there. C three PO made out of old computer parts. Got a at at or a t a t there made of computer parts. These are crayons that someone carved. Star Wars characters in. You can see the little Yoda, Ewok there, Chewie. Pretty fun. So this is a million dollar man, a sculpture made out of shredded money. I think it's a million dollars of shredded money used to compose this figure here. The moose poking his head out there. I, I was thinking, this, I, I thought the moose maybe talks. Do you talk, moose? Maybe he doesn't talk anymore. Not gonna talk? Okay. You sure? You sure? Okay, he's he's not talking today. And here, this is the human candlestick. It says this is a Chinese monk requested his body be mummified and used to enhance the temple. So they just took his 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 remains, his mummified remains, stuck a candle in his hand and said, You can be a candlestick. Just hold this candle forever since you're dead. Yeah, I love all the old fireplaces still here in the building. And a mysterious chest that says, open if you dare. And I always dare. Blood curdling. Tomb of the werewolf. See a skull there. It is, well, there's a dial, a dial down here. Let's turn that dial. Oh, okay, so what you're supposed to do is align your face with the knob and so you can uh, you, you do it so you, your face can become the skull. Okay, you see me there? Oh my, how the skull is on my face, how the skull fits into my face there. Ooh. <laughs> and here is the long-necked woman. We saw the the lip ring woman earlier. Here they would wrap that coil around their neck 
and it would make their neck longer. Well, technically, actually, here's a, here's a fun fact. It did not make their neck longer. It actually pushed their shoulders down. So their neck stayed the same size, just their shoulders were shoved downward. They're inviting us to climb up on this platform here. Florida's backyard beasts. What sort of beasts are in this swamp? How did that get me? There's a, oh, as we're going back up here. Yeah, you see the, the gator down there. There's some snakes. And over here, this is a Burmese python strangling a wild boar. That's pretty wild. Let's get off this platform before it collapses again. Oh, I actually saw this item. It was used to be in the lobby of the Ripley's, uh, Ripley's warehouse. This was a shoe swallowed by a crocodile. This happened in St. Augustine at uh, the, the St. Augustine alligator farm. Uh, someone's shoe fell off from a zip line, was swallowed by a crocodile, and they had to have a veterinarian reach inside the crocodile's mouth there to extract the shoe. And there you see it. A little, a little worse for wear, but still, you could probably still wear that. More spooky. Spooky skulls there. Think of all these spooky skulls. This is the spookiest. So this is Zane Wild. He's an artist who creates these skulls. Yeah, these are pretty, pretty amazing. Pretty, it's like chilling look. Yeah, look at these skulls. It looks like from here we're headed back down. Walk through here, we have two custom coffins. This one's shaped like an elephant. It can be buried in the back of an elephant. It's the lid right there. And this is a cobra coffin. You want to be buried in a cobra. And you can see the cobra's head there. You to spend eternity in the back of a cobra. Or an elephant. Some interesting things in this case. An egg inside of an egg. It was an egg that cracked and had another egg inside of it. It's like an ostrich egg that had another egg. And of course, another one of my favorites, similar to the Fiji mermaid, we have the fur-bearing trout there, which allegedly grew a, a set of, it grew fur on its body to protect it from the cold winters of the Great Lakes. See the two-headed calf there? It's always impressive to see the skeleton and see how they connect. And then a human hair vest which that's just pretty gross. I probably would not want to wear that. What's happening in here? This is uh, a dance cam, dance right here. So we dance, oh there's outside of my camera. I don't know if you can see me dancing from there, but I am da definitely dancing. Random piece of movie history, Godfather mouth prosthetic that, uh, that uh, what's his name? Marlon Brando, Marlon Brando wore that prosthetic there to make him look like that. We have a piratey shooting gallery in here. So we'll grab uh, this here. I've been getting a little better at these recently. Oh, this one's hard. Oh, I, I just said I was doing better. And now I'm like doing terrible. There he goes, eyes lit up when I did that. Oh man, I'm almost out of shots. There we go, this giant rat in the treasure chest. Come on, skeletons, I want to animate you. There we go, got him to turn his head. Got nine more shots. There we go. Getting a little better, picking it up here. Let's see who's in this barrel. Oh, it's a skeleton. <laughs> Let's see. What else have we not shot yet? Oh, there's a mouse on the floor. That mouse spins. And we are out of shots. But much fun was had. Oh man, here's a penny press that actually does have the building here, but you actually need a, your own penny and two quarters, which I just simply don't have right now. Dang it. I'm gonna come back sometime and get the, uh, get the one that's actually shaped like the building. Dang, wish I had the change. Okay, never mind. I actually dug, dug through my wallet and was able to find just enough change for, uh, for the penny here, and I did have a penny 
in my wallet. So it's interesting, it's kind of fun to put your own penny in, honestly, it kind of has its own charm to it. But we want this one, okay, we insert, pull out, and then we want this one. And here it goes. Oh, you can hear the penny being crushed there. It's got an old school penny crushing machine. And there we go, I love it. It's got the, uh, the building on it, the Warren Motel. All right, I think it is time to exit through the vortex tunnel. Ooh. All right, through the turnstile. Yeah, here at Ripley is always something weird around every corner, like this levitating faucet that is physically impossible. We have kind of a bonus attraction out here in the parking lot. This is a four-roomed house here, carved out of a single redwood log. So we can actually walk inside. You can see on the outside, it is definitely a log. And somehow they managed to put an entire house in here. Let's see, enter here through the kitchen. A dining room table. The dining room table is a little small, but big for being inside of a log. A little sitting area here. <laughs> and the couch. There's a the fireplace. Oh, a fireplace in a log seems dangerous. But, uh, yeah, I guess they sleep back here. This is the bedroom. I don't know. I think, I think at some point I'm going to live in a log. Maybe when I retire, me and Jen can move into a giant log and over here next to uh, the auditorium we have a uh, a replica of Michelangelo's David you can actually see the very tippy top of his head poking out up there he's concealed by these bushes they've built these bushes to uh, to conceal David to uh, protect his modesty and this is apparently one of only two replicas that were taken from the same quarry as uh, Michelangelo's original David. So let's enter this uh, enclosure here and uh, take a look at David. We can get a little side view there of David, protect his modesty a little bit, and then uh, we can walk around to the, uh, the front of the statue there and get a full view of David. Sorry, I, uh, I just didn't want to get demonetized. So thank you so much for joining me today as we come to the original, the original Ripley's Auditorium here in St. Augustine, Florida. And again, I love the Castle Warden. I love uh, how they integrate the exhibits into it, how you can still see the, the old architecture inside, how it used to be a hotel that Robert Ripley himself stayed in. And uh, again, always fun stuff to check out in Ripley's. So thank you so much for coming with me. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun, random stuff. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more we will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Um, and of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.